Greetings, friend. I will show you step by step how Sudoku World Champion Tan Tan Dai solved a hard classic Sudoku for a Kraken the Cryptic live video. You won't believe the solve she makes that seems to defy logic. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, where Tan Tan starts is up here in block three. These two threes, she notices a three in block three. Then quickly put some Snyder notation marks up here in block two, because there's only two possibilities for those candidates there. Two possibilities here in block five. And then she actually marks these three spots for a three in block four. I mean, that's not normal Snyder, but she is the world champion. It works for her. Then she comes down to block nine and sees with these threes. She can solve for three right there. And with these threes and this three, she puts Snyder threes in block seven. It seems like she concentrates on a particular candidate that has you know, a lot of givens and a lot of restrictions. I saw this before with the other puzzle she did. Moves on to the fives pretty quickly with this five. You got fives in block three, and they act as a pointing pair. Five can't be anywhere else down column seven. And then very quickly sees this four seven right here and this 4-7 right there, and notices that this is a 4-7 hidden pair. And this is the way Tan Tan notates. She's just using these corner marks, and so this is for her is a hidden pair. I'll use center marking, uh, but it's a very quick. I mean, the way she gets on there, she's typing this out quickly. In fact, to this point, it only took her 13 seconds to get here, and Mark and Simon are just amazed. And then with this 9, she's got... A pointing pair of nines here in block six. Uh, then focuses on the sevens and sees with these two sevens. She can solve for seven in block seven. And that leads to a lot more solves with the sevens. With that seven, she can solve for seven here. And with these sevens, a seven in block two. And with these sevens, a seven in block five. And then the seven up here in block six. And Tan Tan did all those marks in about two seconds. Marking that seven, she displaced the seven up the four up there and she saw for a four. And Simon and Mark they're slapping at, at how absurdly fast Tan Tan is 24 seconds to get to this point. And they had a real hard time solving this. That's why they gave it to her just to see what she could do. And there's gonna be a point where she does get a little stuck. And so I'll show you that here as we get closer to it. And after solving this four, she sees these sevens and finishes off the sevens in block nine and then she quickly moves over to the ones and notices with this one there's a pointy pair of ones in block seven and then with this one she puts snyder ones in block nine and then sees with the fours there are snyder fours also in block nine stays with the fours with these fours she sees another pointing pair of fours in block two which allows the fours to be only restricted to these two cells in block one and then Tan Tan switches to the nines and sees with this nine and that pointing pair of nines, the nines are actually a pointing pair here in block five. She doesn't mark the nines right there. She could, but she doesn't at that point. In fact, she goes over here and puts this pointing pair of nines in block seven. Then switches to the eights, seeing this eight come up here. She puts a pointing pair of eights in block three. Uh, and then with the five, Cutting across, you saw that. There's one thing that really pushes this puzzle into hard territory. It's the high number of pointing pairs, like these fives, these eights, these nines, these ones. And also there's some tricky hidden pairs, which we're going to get to, uh, all which I show you how to find in my Sudoku solving guide. You can click on the pinned comment below to download it for free. But let's see how quickly she can find some hidden pairs now. First one she finds is this two eight cut across here. And this 2-8 coming up, there's only two possibilities for the 2 and an 8. So whenever you have that situation, you have yourself a nice hidden pair. So the 2 and 8 have to be in those two spots right there, which kicks this 3 out. And now it makes these 3s a pointing pair. And so I'll get rid of the colors. And with the pointing pairs, Tan Tan notices pretty quickly that she can remove the 3 right there and solve this cell for a 3. And with that three, 
displace the Snyder mark. She solves for three up here and block two. And then she starts to switch gears. Uh, she looks across, doesn't really see any more easy marks. So she looks and sees this is called a heavy house. There's a one, three, four, seven, and nine in row one. So you need a two, five, six, and eight. And she sees that there's two eights right there looking at that cell. And so that can only be a five or a six. And you can tell when a solver starting to get stuck, they'll start putting in the buy value cells. I see Mark Goodlift do this all the time. So Tantian is doing it, it means you're starting to slow down a little bit. However, you could do one a little bit better. There's a little bit wrong, something wrong with this mark. So I'll give you a few seconds to see if you can actually solve this cell. All right, congratulations, you spot it. It took Tantan like three or four seconds to figure this out. But all you need in row one is a two, five, six, and eight. Yes, you have the two, eight there, but there's also the five right there. So she quickly changes that to a six, which puts more pressure along row one. You just need a two, five, and eight. She sees this two and five, so she marks this four and eight. After marking the eight, she puts a two right here, so she and here so she makes what's like a, a conjugate pair of twos it's kind of an interesting way of looking at it. but since there's you know either this is a two or that's two she doesn't mark the five yet for a two five naked pair but she puts the conjugate two there and then she does come back and she's kind of looking around the grid she puts the nines here in block eight she starts looking for more buy value cells she first focuses on this cell and notices that can only be a one or a nine because you have the two eight here you got the three six seven here you got the pointing pair of fours and the five right there so that's just a one nine then it goes all the way over here row nine column eight and this is that this can only be a six or an eight and then uh actually does make a solve sees that you have an eight here pointing pair of eights right there this eight pointing pair of eights is part of the hidden pair so she's able to solve this cell right here for an eight. And now she's at one minute and 32 seconds into the solve. She's close to finding the next breakthrough in the puzzle, but this is might be one of the hardest parts of the whole puzzle. And it takes her a while to find it. So I want to hear from you. What did you do at this point in the puzzle? Drop it in the comments. I want to hear how you compare to the Sudoku world champion. Because this next solve as she does it's probably going to blow your mind so what she does is a couple more marks she puts the two five there it's a conjugate pair she puts a one five nine here thinking that there must be something up here in block one and then with this eight and this eight she puts snyder eights in block eight and now the key of this puzzle I'm going to tell you, it's a long row seven. She's got to find what's going on in row seven. And so do you if you want to make more progress in the puzzle. Uh, she notices with this pointing pair of fives that in this five, that the fives are restricted right here. They're actually another pointing pair. And then she puts a four six right here because she looks at another heavy house. Two, three, five, seven, eight. It's going to be a one, four, six, nine. Well, the ones are pointing. The nine's right there. She puts a four, six right there. Then she goes over here and block seven and puts four, six here to go four, six, nine. And then this next solve, it took her one minute and 12 seconds. Okay. So she's going around, cannot make a solve. And finally, she removes the four from right here and solves this cell for a four. And so I'm going to bring up this pause the video moment. I, when I saw this, it kind of blew my mind. I had no idea how she did it. I even had to look in the comments. So pause the video and see why you can eliminate a four from that cell. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spot it. You are an expert at finding hidden pairs or naked quads because you got to find one or the other. What you could have done, what she could have done is looked across row seven and you want to say where can the five and eight go in row seven well with this five eight right here they can't be in these three cells and you have a five eight right here so they can't be in this cell and you have an eight and pointing pair of fives right here they can't be in this cell so you can actually put a five and an eight in these two cells 
Once you put the five and eight in these two cells, what you could see is that the two is now restricted because it can't be in these three cells. Can't be here because of this two. You could solve this cell for two. That is the normal way to get past this part of the puzzle. You have to find this. I studied the puzzle, solved it on my own. You gotta find this particular combination and know that this is a two in order to make any progress. The way Tan Tan did it, and it makes sense looking at what's marked, is she noticed these four cells and put those in green. This is a naked quad. She noticed that in this block, you have a one, three, four, six, nine remaining. Well, since the nine is right there, these can only be a one, three, four, and a six. And this cell can only be a four or a six. So those four digits, one, three, four, and six, are limited to the four green cells. So Tantan saw that and said, well, a four can't be there. It's got to be one of those green cells. And she didn't mark it green, but she did that. And then she was able to make this solve for a four. Awesome stuff. Very cool. And she put that in the comments. Is like That's how she figured out that particular solve. Because I wasn't the only viewer who could not see that. Maybe you did. But this four displaced the Snyder one, and that's what she was able to solve. And so let's see where she gets stuck next and what amazing solve she uses to get out of it. She put that one right there, and then she actually puts a two five right here. She doesn't realize she can solve that for a two, but what she does is she's able to make some more good eliminations here. Because what she sees is, oh, okay, two five, two five, uh, it must be a naked pair two five, so this cell cannot be a Five. And so she eliminates the five from right there and realizes this is the only place for a five in block three. So then she solves this cell for a five. I, I think that's how the logic worked. But quickly, you know, it leads to all the, the same type solving. Because after she does that, five there, puts two right here. And then she comes back down and she solves that for a two. Okay. And then in block three, she sees, oh, eight's gotta be here. So this is gonna be an eight, and that's gonna be your two. And noticing this is a six, nine, naked pair remaining. She solves this quickly for a one, displacing that Snyder nine. And then she actually marks the six, nine right here. And you see when she starts marking, she's gonna slow down a little bit. She can't really see where to go next. She puts a five, eight right here. As I told you, that's part of that five, eight hidden pair. And she remember that this was a quad, right? And then puts five, eight, nine here in block five. So she's got the five, eight, nine there. And I can't really see where to go. Slowing down, she does resist the urge to mark the whole grid. Uh, then comes up and says, okay, well, if this is a five, eight, and a four can't go there because of th this four, four can't go here because of this four, this has to be four. So she puts that hidden single four right there and starts working in block two. Notices that that's just going to be a one or a six. She notices the two there and there. So she marks this for a two and she puts a one six right here. And it starts working herself out of this particular situation. And then after the one six, sees now with these fives and this five she can solve for five right there in block one and in the five and this five she solves for the five and the three quickly in block four and then sees with this one covering all those ones that has to be the one in block seven and sees right here you know you need a three four six and nine she sees that there's a three six nine so she marks this as a naked single four doesn't solve for the three right away. Uh, kind of misses that opportunity, but instead goes over and says, okay, that's a four, that's gotta be your six. That's gonna be a one, and that's gonna be your six. And then she cleans up here in block uh, one, two, and three at the top. So that's a six, you know, that's a nine. And then she notices that this has to be uh, a nine. Uh, this is a one, and then that's a four. Okay, after cleaning all that up, she then comes down here in block seven and actually does catch that three. And in column six, see that there's seven digits filled out. All you need left is a four and a nine. Notice this four. So she does the four and a nine right there. 
comes over here and solves this for a nine, solves that for a six, clean it up. And then in here does neat, naked triple trick, I call it. You just need a five, six, and an eight. You have the eight and six right here, six repeated. She solves all three very quickly. That's gotta be your six, that's gotta be your five, and that's gotta be your eight. And then she solves this cell for a five, covers the eight right there, and sees the two there, so that's the two, and then she does the one right there. So looking good, she got the top of the grid, she got the bottom of the grid. Where does she go from here? She comes up here into column four, realizes that can't be an eight anymore, just a five or a nine. Solves this for a five, solves that for a nine, and then comes over here and sees you just need a two, five, and a six. Another neat naked triple trick, two, five there, five repeated. She solves all three, five, two, and then the six, just like that. Sees these one, so she solves that for a one. And then she comes over here and says, oh, yep, with this two, that's an eight and that's a two. And then comes over here into block five, and she solves that for the six, solves that for eight. And she solves all three of these pretty quickly, noting she, that she just needs a four, six, and nine. She must see that there's a four nine there and then the four repeated because she goes six, nine, and then the last digit is a four. And so her total time was four minutes and three seconds, including over a minute to find that tricky solve in the middle. Now I'm gonna ask you to challenge yourself to spot the pointing and hidden pairs in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.